What's up, Sports Talk Detroit? It is the offseason for the Pistons, and we are going to continue to talk draft prospects like crazy here on Sports Talk Detroit and what the future could look like for the Pistons. It's an exciting time, and we have the fifth pick, and I'm going to talk about a guy in this video with the fifth pick that I think has the ability to be the best player in this draft. I'm not saying he has the highest probability of being the best player, and that is Jaden Ivey, but I do think he has that athletic upside. Um, I just poured into some tape on this guy. And what I'm hearing across uh, the popular belief is that Jaden Ivey is not as good of a fit with Cade Cunningham as other people would be, and that they're actually worried about the fit. Now, everybody talks about Cade as this guy who can fit next to anyone. Anybody can fit next to Cade. But then for some reason, when we talk about Jaden Ivey, people are like, I don't know if he fits next to Kate. Well, let's break it down a little bit. I want to talk to you about why I think Jay Nivey is a great fit next to Cade Cunningham and why it works. So let's talk about that right now. For starters, it is people worrying about his shooting. Okay. I get it, but uh, he was a 25% three-point shooter, 26 in his freshman season at Purdue. And then last year he was 36. That's a 10% bump. That's a 10% bump when he became the focal point of defenses in their attack. So it wasn't like he got 10% better at three-point shooting when he was just a shooter. It was when the defense only cared about him, he is still shooting at a high clip. Um, and a lot of these are contested threes. So I think if you have a guy that's taking more open threes, that number is going to climb to 38, 39, 40%. His jump shot does not look broken. It's more of a set shot. I get that. That's not ideal, but it's not broken. It looks good. And the numbers last year back that up. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, he doesn't have to be a phenomenal shooter. Look, he is a driver. He is a slasher. He is a supreme athlete. Look at the comparisons you're getting on, on, on this guy. John Morant. John Morant is the person that the tape reminds people of, or John Wall, or different things like that. Um, okay, I'm fine with that. And I think that pairs really well next to Cade, who's more of a methodical. He doesn't use extreme athleticism. He's a mid-range guy. That's where Jaden Ivey struggles. All right. Cade is a good facilitator who makes good decisions and makes next level passes. Jaden Ivey is a guy who can facilitate, but it's usually just the easiest pass available. Um, so there, if do you get what I'm saying here? Their skill sets complement each other. Jaden can't score in the mid-range. Kate is a mid-range dead eye. He showed that last year. Kate isn't going to blow by people with an amazing first step, even though he had one that was better than most of us th thought. Jaden Ivey absolutely has a first step blow by, but it goes further than that. When I was watching the tape, one of the skills nobody's talking about with Jaden Ivey, and because I don't think it was utilized that much, is his ability to use screens, run around screens. I mean, we're talking like, you know, Rip Hamilton, Ray Allen. No, I'm not saying he's good at it like that, but I'm talking about the curling around screens, catching and shooting. There were many instances at Purdue that that's exactly what he did. And he scored at a pretty efficient rate on that. So as a secondary ball handler, what an awesome arsenal to have because his first step in quickness isn't just with the ball in his hands. He has a quick first step. He's quick anytime, anytime he's on the court. So he was able to do that, and he's willing to run around those screens. And even when he's the focal point of the defense, he has to be exhausted, and he was still doing it. Now, that's the offensive end, and I think that's why it's a good fit there. Um, what about transition? The Pistons have traditionally not been great in fast break points, tradition, and efficiency in transition. Jaden Ivey would immediately change that. The dude is fantastic in transition. That is just because he's an elite athlete who has a good handle and can make decent decisions. So that would absolutely help in transition. If you have a guy like Cade and Jaden Ivey, either one can lead a fast break. Either one can run the offense when needed to. And I'm just saying this would be a fantastic pairing on the offense and on the transition. What about the defense? Does it work on defense? Here's what we've heard about Jay Nivey. He has lapses in judgment when he's off ball defending. And you see that. Now, I do attribute part of this to the fact that 
he's the whole offense at Purdue. Like he was the whole team. Like I probably have lapses when I'm gassed from all the work I'm putting in on the other end too. Um, this is not an easy task to do to play heavy minutes in the big 10, be the guy that everybody's gunning for and still play consistently hard and well on the defensive end. So I understand the lapses in judgment off ball. Is that what we're going to ask him to do when he's next to Cade? The whole thing about this draft pick is that we want someone, Killian can do it. We want someone opposite of Cade that can be a good on ball defender for the best player of the opposing team. Jaden Ivey's a good on-ball defender. There's his athletic traits, his quickness, and things like that transfer over to the defensive side. Maybe not as quick, but he does play well and good on-ball defense. So you put Jaden on that guy. Kate is able to go on the secondary guy. Try and tell me why this isn't a good fit. I think the reason people think that this isn't a good fit is because it hasn't worked. You have like Damian Lillard and CJ McCallum in Portland. Well, yeah, that doesn't fit because it's a completely different scenario. Like, and they were never able to win it all there. I, I get that. You talk about John Wall and Bradley Beal. You talk about all these different things, but here's what I will tell you. Cade's a different animal than most of those guys in his multifaceted and, and, and how good he is. I will also say things like this. If Jay Nivey's ceiling is anything close to John Morant, look what he did all by himself this year. You're telling me that having a guy like Cade next to him wouldn't help. And, and come on, like, let's, let's get real here, people. So here's the thing. Do you draft for fit? Not so much. It has to fit with Cade though. There's another video that I'm going to do on that, but here's what I will say. You draft best talent available. You worry about fit and you leave that to Dwayne Casey and his coaching staff, because I'm telling you right now in a time of uh, positionless basketball in a time where you have a team like the Boston Celtics playing as well as they are with two guys that shouldn't seemingly play well together with Brown and Tatum, like it works. Like you can find a way to make these things work. And Ivy and Cade are longer. That'd be a long backcourt. There's so many good things to this. You guys don't get caught up on the fit because if you think Jaden Ivy has the talent to be one of the best players in this draft, because there's a world where he is the best and he's even better than the big three. You need to take a swing on that. We were all so bummed that we dropped to number five, but go and watch the highlights of Jaden Ivey and tell me that guy isn't a top one, two, or three talent in this draft. And there are thoughts that the dude could drop. There are thoughts that the Kings could go Keegan Murray, and that would lead Jaden Ivey right to us. It doesn't make sense to me, but he's here. Don't worry about the fit. If the Kings mess up and worry too much about the fit between Fox and Ivy, we shouldn't do the same. And he fits really well next to Cade Cunningham. I am more and more convinced of this the more film I watch. Does he fit next to Fox? Probably not. But he does fit next to Cunningham. So I think that's something that is worth the risk, worth the does he fit, doesn't he fit? Pick on talent. See what he can do. I'm not even going to talk about the attitude stuff. That's up to the coaching staff and Troy Weaver and the GM to decide. They can figure that out. I'm not in the interview rooms. So tell me what you think. Is Ivy a good pick? Is he a good fit? I think he, if I'm being honest, you had to hang on this video for a while. He's probably my number one on my big board right now for the Pistons, assuming the big three are gone. And even if they aren't, he'd be close. So we're going to continue to look at these guys and continue to see what happens. Hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already. We're going to be dropping a ton of good Pistons content. We always have, but we're going to be dropping even more. And we will see you on the next one. Go Pistons.